Sponsored by Molecule. Yes, Apple still cares about the Mac. It's the kind of care you have for your older kid, the one who's graduated college and gotten a job and settled down, and who doesn't demand the same kind of attention as your younger kid, who's basically Taylor Swift and touring, and oh my god, everything is so much and so crazy, you can't take your eyes off of them for a second. But it's care. Steady, check in once a week over FaceTime and visit a few times a year on holiday care. And part of that care manifests itself every year at WWDC, Apple's worldwide developer conference. When the new version of macOS gets announced, the new feature sets get introduced, and the first beta gets pushed out to developers. What does that all mean for macOS 10.15 in 2019? Well, Guy Rambo from 9to5 has shared some rumors. So hit subscribe and Thanos snap that little bell gizmo so you don't miss any more breakdowns, and then let's dive into the analysis. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. A lot of what's coming to the Mac this year is building on what was introduced, let's charitably call it in alpha form, last year, UIKit apps for the Mac. We've got news, home, voice recorder, and stocks, and they're all a bit of an inconsistently hot to lukewarm mess right now. So much so it's hard to believe Apple of all companies was willing to release them, even as proofs of concept. But they were and did, for reasons, along with the promise that UIKit apps on the Mac would be coming to developers this year. My understanding is that this version of Marzipan will be much better. So much better it'll help flashy thing last year's versions just right out of our brain boxes. Not finished, not fully polished, not until it comes out of beta and developers can start shipping off of it, but much closer to Marzipan as it was originally and always intended to be. I know it scares a lot of Mac traditionalists, probably as much as Coco and Next scared the classicists, but it also feels very much like the near future, at least until we get the real Next Next. And that means it really has to be insanely great. In a separate story on 9to5, Guy said that there'll be Mac-specific API, application programming interfaces, to support the Mac menu bar and the MacBook Pro touch bar, among other things. Support will be there for multiple Marzipan windows, which has always been a key part of the Mac user experience. So, hurrah. Split view Marzipan apps will also be able to be resized and reset through the divider, like on iOS, which would already be a huge improvement to the announced and promptly abandoned split view mechanic currently on macOS. And if they include a way to swap out split view apps without having to destroy and recreate the entire split view, but only after hunting down that one app that always perplexingly goes full screen off screen, I will personally send a proper Montreal poutine recipe to Cafe Max. You're welcome. There's a new combined Find My iPhone and Find My Friends app that's apparently coming to iOS 13, amped up with the ability to find other stuff tagged with Apple's version of a Bluetooth tile dongle, maybe coming this fall. Thanks to Marzipan, that's apparently coming to macOS 10.15 as well. If it has all the features Guy says it might, while it'll likely be far more useful on iPhone and even iPad, it'll be great to be able to manage it all on the Mac. That's my guess for my workflow for pretty much everything Marzipan as well. Watch for the quick glances, iPhone for access anywhere, iPad for aggregation and easy browsing, and Mac for hardcore editing. iMessage for macOS should be getting parity with iMessage for iOS. Finally, sent with fireworks. Does that mean the several years old AppKit app will get updated to support them? Or a new Marzipan app will just bring the UIKit functionality on over? Marzipan everything, I say. Get us to the future faster and dog food everything as much as possible so Apple hits all the pain points before, or at the very least alongside developers. Last year, Apple rebooted workflow as Siri shortcuts and brought not only automation to iOS, but suggested actions and even voice triggers. I hope the suggested part would serve as an easy entry point for even casual users, as the workflow part seriously amped up the power for power users. A year later, and I still haven't seen that many suggestions, which means I don't think shortcuts has seen a lot of onboarding. But the workflows, they're everywhere among the nerdy. And according to Guy, this year we're getting shortcuts for the Mac that could, should, would include a Marzipan shortcuts app for the Mac to match the one on iPad, and improved Siri support so that the Mac's assistant capabilities better match those of the iPad, and shortcuts can provide a non-crippled experience to everyone. Siri, and hopefully this means both iOS and macOS, should also finally be getting increased intense support, including for media playback, which will be huge for anyone using any service or app outside of Apple's own. Now, shortcuts are great, and 
and are probably going to end up being an important step towards the future of easy to assemble voice apps. I'd have loved to have seen shortcut support on the Mac last year when the feature was first introduced for basically everything else. But Workflow was an iOS app when Apple bought it, and it took everything the team had just to turn it into shortcuts and ship it, version one feature complete, for all the iOS-based operating systems and devices last year. Now, Marzipan has had time to bake, and they've had time to spin up the Mac version, and provided they can stay in lockstep from this point on, a lot of nerds are gonna be a lot of happy come beta in June and release this fall. The overall digital well-being movement and the way some companies and activists talk about it has always been a little pandery and sensational for me. I just like data, and that's just exactly what screen time gives me, how much of what I'm doing and for how long. Based on that data, I can be more honest with myself about what I'm doing, and if I had kids, what they're doing, and make better, more informed decisions and changes when and as needed. And this year, according to Guy, that's also coming to the Mac. The feature set sounds identical to what we currently have on iOS, and if there are any improvements there, hopefully we'll get them here as well. It's hard to balance simplicity with robustness, security with usability, but that's Apple's job, even and especially in a more open computing system like the Mac. A lot of the new services Apple pre-announced in March, like Apple Arcade, are gonna work not only on the Mac, but with family sharing. And that means family sharing needs to be as easy and as accessible to manage on the Mac as it has been on iOS. Guy says Apple will be implementing a new Apple ID management panel in system preferences to help with that, similar to how settings work on iOS. That way you can sign up for services new and old and assign them on the Mac, just like you would from your iPhone or iPad. He also mentions that the Mac will be getting file provider extensions, which should help services like Dropbox better integrate with the Finder system. Bonus points if they never ever have to harass me about enabling special accessibility powers ever again. No means no. Also, an API devs can use to write device drivers, and wow, but I would love to see that on iPad Pro as well. Currently, if you have a modern Apple Watch, you can use it to unlock your Mac and approve Apple Pay transactions if your Mac doesn't have Touch ID. But Touch ID on Mac can also do things Apple Watch can't, like enable autofill for passwords and authorize privilege escalation in some cases as well. According to Guy, Apple Watch could be gaining the ability to do everything Touch ID can do now as well, which would be really cool because as much as Touch ID is far more convenient than typing a long, strong, unique password, Apple Watch authentication is damn near invisible at best, and at worst will bring Touch ID-like functionality to Macs that still don't have Touch ID which is, confoundingly, still many of them. Macs have worked with external displays for a long time, but new, Guy says, there'll be a simple menu accessible by hovering right over the green traffic light button on any window that'll provide options not only for full screen and tiling and hopefully other long overdue window management options, but for moving that window to any external display, including full screen on an iPad. Better still, if the iPad supports Apple Pencil, which all of the most recent iPads do, you'll be able to draw on it with the pencil and have the results input into the Mac app, which should make Wacom cry, again. About the only display you won't be able to send Windows to is the one on Molecule. No big deal though, because Molecule is already pretty great all on its own. It has technology that's capable of destroying air pollutants at the molecular level. Its technology has been verified by science, but more importantly, it's been tested by real people in the real world. And that's what makes it compelling to me. Molecule helped allergy and asthma sufferers around the country better cope with their conditions and significantly reduce their symptoms. To get yours, go to Molecule.com, that's M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com, and enter Vector at checkout to save $75. Thanks, Molecule, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Mac OS 10.15 should debut at the WWDC 2019 keynote on June 3rd. No word yet on the name, but since the last couple of versions have been paired, Yosemite with El Capitan, Sierra with High Sierra, if Apple holds to that pattern, what could we see? Probably not Death Valley or Big Morongo, but maybe a Mojave-themed Joshua Tree or Red Rock? Hey, how about this? Hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments and give me your best guess for the next name, along with your thoughts on all of these features and all of the other features you do and don't want to see in macOS 10.15. Thank you so much for watching, and see you next video.